Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Pat Bright, broadcasting out of the United Kingdom into your homes. Welcome to your channel. Welcome to my channel. Um, and thank you for passing by. You can click the thumbs up, the thumbs down. You can subscribe or you can share. And um, for new subscribers, um, thank you for subscribing. For existing subscribers, thank you for supporting me. Um, basically, I wanted, you know, we hear so much about the CV. Um, I just wanted to talk about it in terms of relationships because people are kind of distracted about what can actually happen as a result of what is going on. And it's going to be very testing times for relationships. Um like I said, I went out this morning and um, I heard a, a, a couple talking and I think the woman was saying, look, she walked straight past me. She wasn't, she ignored me. And the other person was saying, no, she was probably distracted. She didn't see you. And the other one was arguing and saying, yes, she did. Yes, she did. This is a time when people are going to be either irritable with each other or they are going to be nice to each other. And even if they're nice to each other, they might be nice now because everything is okay. They seem to have things under control. They have gone to the shops. They can't buy every possible thing. there will always be something that they forgot. But they re feel reasonably comfortable that they've got enough in their cupboards that will last them for a couple of months, hopefully. And so now they feel quite peaceful and as though, even though they feel a bit uncertain, they feel as though they've got things under control. Now, suppose in those two months that they've got that food for, turns into three months, four months, and they start running out and the shops start running out and the, um, it turns into six months, maybe seven months, eight months, even a year. Do you think those people are still going to be nice? No, they're going to be frightened, they're going to be resentful, they're going to be angry, they're going to be wanting to fight for survival. It's going to be a dog-eat-dog, -dog. and that's when we're going to have problems. We're going to have problems when people start fighting for survival, and anybody who gets in their way of their survival is going to get it. So, how can we minimise that destruction? How can we stop people from going out there and turning into animals like we see in the shops? People are turning into animals. It's like they've lost their consciousness for a moment. And when they're going to buy something and they can't get what they're going to buy and there's only one left, they're not thinking, oh, I can go somewhere else and get it. They're thinking, I have got to have that tin. I have got to have that toilet roll. My life depends on it. In that moment, they are not being rational. In that moment, they are believing, really believing, that they need that toilet roll and it's integral to their survival. And what's going to happen, especially in relationships, if you're not um, prepared for what is to come, you're going to be at each other's throats. So I just wanted to give you a couple of ideas that I thought of that can maybe help you through it. Of course, it depends on the temperament of the person that you're with. If you're with somebody who's an eternal grump, then it might not work. But, you know, it might it might help to actually talk, to engage, to look at each other differently, to engage differently, to kind of where you wouldn't have been, where you probably just say, ah. It's just his personality. It's just this. You might just want to kind of take a different strategy and hope that it works. Anyway, in relationship, you're definitely going to need tolerance because things are going to start getting on your nerves. Like I said in a previous video, you're used to people being out of the house. You're used to your husband or your wife coming in after a certain time. And you're kind of thinking, yeah, I've got the data myself. Or if you're at work, I've got time to chill, you know, I'm working, I'm concentrating on my work, I'm socialising, I'm talking to different people at work, then all of a sudden they've laid you off from work, 
you, even whether you're getting paid or not, that doesn't really matter. The fact is you're unable to integrate with other people. So now you're home and you're bored and you're frustrated. If you haven't got a hobby or you just live to work and live for your family, times like this might be a bit cumbersome. So if you're at home and your wife and you're used to your wife not being there for you know the most of the day and then or your well I won't say wife I'll say your spouse and then now he or she is in there you know 24 7 five day, seven days a week that person where you were able to tolerate those little indiscretions and frailties and flaws are going to become heightened. So you need to have tolerance. You need to build up your tolerance. You need to say, okay, I've been with this person for so long. that Nothing has changed. This is the way she's always been. It's you, yourself has to change. You have to then change your perception of what you're seeing because that person hasn't changed. The other person hasn't changed. The only thing is, is that you thought you would only have to deal with it with as within a certain few in, you know within a few hours of each day and now you're finding that that time has been extended and you haven't prepared yourself for that so you're going to have to need to prepare yourself psychologically for being with somebody for a longer period of time and tolerating their indiscretions the things that you could blow off because you know oh thank god i'm going to work in the morning or thank god i'm going to work in 10 minutes or 15 minutes you won't be able to do that anymore. So you're going to need to build up your tolerance levels and you need, you're going to need to build up a psychology of acceptance. Patience, this too will pass. You're going to need to develop patience. Like I said, if you've got a nagging wife, I mean, I was in the supermarket the other day and I had this woman to her husband and he was saying, do you want this thing? No, I don't want that. She went on and on. And he was only trying to be helpful. And I thought to myself in that instant, can you imagine living with somebody like that? And he was still trying. He was still trying and he had grown immune to it or he has developed patience or he has developed acceptance. One of the three. But he didn't seem bothered by it. Me, on the outside looking in, I thought to myself, there's no way I could deal with somebody in my ear like that, in such a negative, nagging tone. And regardless of what he did, regardless of what he asked for, regardless of what he said, she had somebody to snap at him and shut him down. And he was just like, I was like, water off a duck's back. And that's how he has probably got through to that relationship. He's just literally emotionally detached himself. So that whatever she says is probably like, you know, you become immune to things. It probably just like water the ducks back. So in his circumstances, he's become emotionally detached and emotionally distant. But if you don't have that, you're going to have to develop, you're going to need to develop patience. Laughter. Laughter always deflects the adversity. And it's going to be very difficult to laugh. But what I'm happy to see, there's lots of jokes going around about the coronavirus. Some people might say, how can you be laughing at this serious time? How can people be sending jokes? I heard somebody say, you know, um, one of the DJs was talking about promoting his show. You know, he was more or less saying, OK, during this time, you can play music. You can listen to the DJs. We'll be on live you know, because some of them have been laid off of their jobs, so they'll be playing extra, they'll be doing extra shows. Somebody wrote back, oh, all you're doing is promoting yourself. And in, how can you be promoting yourself in this, in this time? You know, and I thought to myself, you know, that could have been taken a different, you know, that could have been a positive. Because at times like this, you do need a distraction. You do need something lighthearted. So... If you if you like music, what's wrong with saying, you know, if you do want to get away from the news, listen to music. All I'm saying is that people's attitude and the way people view what's happening now will determine how they're going to behave through it. We're, we're, it hasn't even hit us yet. It hasn't even hit us yet. 
and that people are getting so negative and fearful and scared and it's understandable. It's really understandable. You know, when you're told that you you have to self-isolate and you can't go into work and you live on your own and you depend on people in their homes or at work to interact with, to give you a piece of sanity, and then you go home by yourself and you do whatever it is you need to do, waking up in the morning and then you're off to work. And when you can't do that, many are going to become irritable and depressed. So, patience. I'm told, supposed to be, not supposed to be talking about people who are single, but I just had to add that in. So, you know, if you're in a relationship, patience needs to be developed. No, I was talking about laughter, wasn't I? How did I get into that then? Anyway, laughter. So don't kind of brush off um, and say you shouldn't be laughing or you shouldn't be enjoying yourself and you shouldn't be doing this. Have your little, make sure you buy your little um, treats. Make sure, you know, you've got your little bits of chocolate or your little bit, things that you like. And, you know, every now and then you can treat yourself. You don't have it all at once. You can treat yourself. So when you're feeling a bit, oh, my God, it's a bit too heavy, take one of the treats that you've bought yourself. Watch a joke. You know, or oh, there's so many funny jokes. Find something that's going to make you laugh. Watch comedies, you know, and listen to music. Music can be very therapeutic. If you don't like music, they've got lots of um, med what they call it, guided meditation on YouTube. You know, look for something that you enjoy that can distract you from all of this while you're at home, while you may be self-isolating. Um, what else is there? Good communication is important. People think that communication is just saying hello and saying, yeah, who up? Yeah, all right. Some people think that's communication. Effective communication is finding out about the other person, understanding the other person, learning about the other person, interacting, the two of you engaging, find to, trying to find out as much about the other person as possible. Not like in an intrusive way, but it's as a topic of conversation. What? How did your day go? Oh, really? And how did you react? How did you feel? My God, really? So that person, how? what is happening with that person? And you, you actually involve your spouse or your partner in your life. So your, when your partner comes, when you come over the next day, your partner can say, so what happened to Jill or what happened to Susan? What happened? How did it go today? How did you feel today? How did you manage it today? Most people don't talk like that. So when you're having effective communication, it's about listening to the other person, talking to them, engaging with them, understanding what their life is about. Even if the person is at home, so what do you do, babes? It must be really hard for you to be at home. And then, oh, they're, they're, so how did you find it? Did you enjoy it? And if they're a bit grumpy, we'll say, you know, this, type, this, this too shall pass. You know, and you can have a look at look at what they've done. If they've said, "Oh, you know, I fix the um, I fix the radiator," you can go, "Oh, wow, I'm so grateful, thank you, babes," or whatever, whatever it is that they said that they've done. Involve yourself, even if they're at home. Don't look at them as though they are worthless and as though they are layabouts because you know circumstances beyond their control has put them in this position. Now is a time when your partner, who may have been the breadwinner, it's not going to be the breadwinner. And you are going to have to now kind of think, bloody hell, I am now going to have to be the breadwinner. Because it's a bit of touch and go, give and take, and that is what it's about. I was thinking about one of my colleagues at work, and I said to her, you know, how much is your council bill? Oh, I don't know, my husband pays that. And the other time I said to her, so when, what day do your bins go out? Oh, I don't know, my husband does that. She doesn't do a thing. And she's not the only one I've spoken to like that. You know, they, they rely on their husbands for everything. And her husband is self-employed. So I said to her last week, um, so how are you going to get through this phase being, you know, since your husband is self-employed? Is it going to affect his income? So she said, well, it is going to slow down, but they've got 11 months um, of salary put down so that is a family 
who has planned ahead. And so she can afford for 11 months to not feel concerned or worried. But supposing it goes beyond 11 months, just suppose in worst case scenario, and the table turns, and all of a sudden she is now left as the breadwinner because there's no work coming in. How would that relationship survive? They are going, there is going to have to be some give and take. So that's all I'm saying. Tolerance, patience, laughter. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm sure, you know, she has a, a period where she says in the evenings, they set a time where around when they're having their dinner. And this is these are suggestions I'm giving you. When they're having their dinner, that's when they both, the two of them look at the news. The children have gone to bed. They look at the news and they discuss the news and they put the news on pause and they have a chat about it. And that is the quality time that they have together. Something amuses them, they laugh about it. And that is the time. So those two people have got it sorted. They're financially secure at the moment. They spend quality time together and they manage their time well. So these are little tips for survival peeps. Um, love, a lot of love. If you've got somebody to love, we've all got somebody to love, even if it's your next door neighbour. So love, hugs, well, maybe not hugs at this time, but a smile never goes amiss. And affection, well, you'll have to be the one in your life if you're going to be affectionate. You can't be affectionate. The other day, um, again at work, um, the girls were saying, oh, we can't. I'd love to hug you, but I can't hug you now. So those kind of, you know, tactile things will have to be put on the back burner until this thing gets sorted out. But there's nothing better than a smile anyway. Um, so this chaos will reveal your strength of character. It will reveal your, it will test your resilience and it will um, test your faith in a higher power. God will need to come to the rescue in this. And for those of you who don't believe in God, well, you may believe in something else, but I, I believe that people need a belief in a higher power than themselves to get through this if they're going through hard times. They need faith in a higher power just to get through basic life, but especially through these times. Um, so are you who you say you are? Yeah. That is, I wrote that down. Are you who you say you are? You know, some people, they're in relationships and they're able to put on a show for a certain period of time. And then after a while, the mask comes off and they're not who they say they are. They're nothing like who they say they are. And so that will be an issue for the spouse because they won't be able to keep up the charade 24 hours, seven days a week if they're both on lockdown. Um, and when we're thinking about beautifying ourselves, remember, it's inner beauty, not external beauty. You won't be able to go to the eyelash place because they'll probably be shut down. You won't be able to do your nails and um, stuff like that. So you're going to have to try and um, just make yourself as beautiful as possible naturally. And that's outside and within. Um how do you like yourself? Can you stand to be by yourself? I think I mentioned that in an, another video. Um, do you need external validation? I mean, like I said, you know, some people, they go out to work. And especially if they're managers, it's almost like they need people to govern. Like, you know, I know people who say, oh, my team, I, you know, I, I need to um, look after my staff. And they need that external validation. They need that sense of power because in the home, they don't have it and they don't get it. So how are they going to cope? Are they the type of people who, if they stay on their own with no external validation, can they cope? It's forced, you know, we've got people, like I said, they say they love being on their own. They don't care if they don't have a partner. But they can go out and talk to this friend or that friend and socialise, and now they're on lockdown. Do they really like being on their own? Because forced isolation is totally different from voluntary isolation. So those people who thought they liked to live on their own, how are they coping? How do they feel? Do they feel comfortable with themselves? Do they like themselves? Have they got enough um, within their remit 
to work with to get them through this time. This is a time to kind of do a itinerary of your skills, what you like doing from what you don't like doing. Find out what, you, you know, just do something, you know, to expand on what you like doing. You know, you never know. Once you come through the other end, you could have your own business if you're, you know, you can do home study, you can do lots of different things. So don't kind of feel too down about what's going on. Try to think of a positive. What can I do while I'm by myself, while I'm in quarantine, while I'm with, while I'm in isolation, why I can't see, you know, I can't see my family, I can't see my friends. That's only if this applies, because in some extreme cases, it does apply. You have people living on their own and, you know, but they rely on external, some kind of external, whether it's going to the corner shop, whether it's going to a little, you know, especially for the elderly, they have these little events, these little trips. All of those are going to stop. So when people don't like themselves, when they don't like to be on their own, they're in trouble. Because all they're going to do is sit and think of the worst case scenarios. When you need to be thinking about the positives. What can I do to better myself during this period? How can I improve myself during this period? So what frightens you most about this whole thing? Is it dying? Is it catching the virus? The virus? Or is it the isolation? And ask yourself, why is that? Why, you know, especially if it's the isolation. Ask yourself that. Um, so, yeah, I put up here, you can live with people and don't know them. And that's why, that's why I, it's kind of touching on with what I said before. You can be in a relationship with someone. And because you're only with them periodically, you don't really know them. So this is a, this is a time you can get to know people you'll really get to know people. And that's why they're saying, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of divorces because people don't know who they're with. You know, they, they there's this guise, there's, or disguise, whichever way you want to call it, going on. People are putting on a show or whatever it is to get through each day. 24-7, it ain't a pretty picture. If you're not with somebody who makes you laugh, somebody who makes you happy or like, my, my colleague and her husband, who got it sorted. I always say, that is what I'd love. I'd love to have somebody who makes me laugh, you know, you can have fun with, you know, and do lighthearted stuff with. I think it's so important, you know, somebody who makes jokes, and, you know, can talk with you and stuff. But, yeah, so um, another thing, too many distractions and self-interest. Yeah, because sometimes, you don't know the person that you're with because there are too many distractions and too much self-interest. You know, they're only interested in what's important to them, what, they, what you know, what they want. And that's what happens. And when they're interested in what they want, they're not interested in the other person. So the other person gets put on the back burner. And they don't actually think about the other person. So now... You, when you, um, and they distract themselves, whether it's with their phone, whether it's with the football, no no football, love, no football, no pubs. What about all those wives that say, oh, can't wait for my old man to go down the pub. Can't wait for my old man to go and play darts. I'm so grateful when the football season's on. What about them? Football's cancelled. Your old man can't go and play darts. He's not going down to the pub with his mates. You're lumbered with him 24-7. So isolation or quarantine will force you to learn about yourself and the other person. How much do you really like yourself? And how much do you really like the other person? The coronavirus will let you know at the end. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.